G'day folks, welcome back to another episode of the Engine Shed. So today I thought I'd do a video on bullfrog snot and um, the advantages and disadvantages of both. Um, so today, um, what I'm going to do is show you how to apply this stuff, but also the benefits of it. So we've got two A4s here from Hornby. One is bitten, one is Commonwealth of Australia. Commonwealth of Australia is obviously my favourite. So, um, Commonwealth of Australia currently doesn't have any bullfrog snot on it, bitten does. So we're going to show you the difference in performance. Um, both of these have got ESU lock sound or lock pilot chips, which effectively do the same thing. So this is as close as it's going to get to an apples to apples comparison. Um, hopefully it works out really well. Um, so let's get stuck in. Okay, so we've got A4 Commonwealth of Australia sitting on the track now. And to begin the test, without bullfrog snot, I've got five Mark I carriages. Now, for the longest amount of time, Hornby's A4 has been probably the best representation of the class in OA scale. But one of the things that has always been a bit of a drawback from them is just that they don't have a tremendous amount of pulling power uphill. Um, and they are relatively lightweight in comparison to other class of locomotive that Hornby make. So wheel slip is pretty prone for these things, especially when they're going up a grade. So we're going to start with five and you'll see in a second, this is going to try and negotiate my helix and it will probably get about two thirds of the way up before it starts really having trouble. With five Mark ones now, for most people, five Mark ones is probably a standard size train on a layout. For me, um, I run nine to 10 coaches. So if a locomotive can't do it on its own, it needs help and that really requires a lot of effort and a lot of money because you need to have two locomotives with speed synchronization. It gets really, really complex and a lot of the time it doesn't actually perform that well. So given that there is a solution, I thought I'd try it out. So let's see how we go. So let's get A4 COA cranking. Five Mark 1s from Hornby. The coaches themselves are actually fairly lightweight. So let's see how we go. Okay, we're over at the Helix. I've got the A4 running at about 50 speed steps, which is a pretty normal speed for my layout. Um, scale speed, I couldn't honestly tell you. It just looks about right. It's probably about 30, 40 to 50 miles an hour. So we've got a wide shot of the Helix. You can see the undulating grade, especially at this corner of the video. And let's see how she goes. So, so far five doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. Quite nice, there's no major wheel slip, no derailments. Performing quite nicely without bullfrog snot. This is probably the limit of what you could achieve with an A4 without bullfrog snot. So we'll let it get up to the top, we'll reset and we'll add another three coaches to make it eight and we'll see how we go. Okay, here we go, test number two. We've now got eight Mark I coaches attached to the back of Commonwealth of Australia. Let's see how it performs. I'm expecting that this is gonna wheel slip but um, weirder things have happened. And you can see already that there's wheel slip and it's really struggling as it is. So there's a noticeable slump in performance there. It's a lot slower. And there we have it, wheel slip. I so, don't know if you can see that, but visible wheel slip. Okay, it will eventually get its way up, but if you're running multiple trains in a layer, it creates all sorts of dramas and you can end up with more collisions than you end up with um, a reliable running train now you can see it spinning its wheels with eight mark one coaches so we'll just stop it there 
So that is honestly the limit of it. Now there's a lot of factors involved with this. These coaches from Hormi are actually really, really light. So it's not the weight of the coach. It's actually the friction when caused going around the tight radius of the helix as well as the gray. The Hornby Ma A4 is not a very heavy locomotive, so you've got a traction issue there as well. So potentially Bullfrog Snot is going to fix my problem. So let's reset the test and let's see how we go. And we'll show you how to put Bullfrog Snot on the Commonwealth of Australia. Back in a second. Okay, folks, we're back on the workbench. So in front of me, I've got the Commonwealth of Australia ready to go for its application of the Bullfrog Snot. So the Bullfrog Snot comes in this little jar. It's very much like a PVA glue kind of consistency solution. You can see it's this lime green um, or aqua green solution. Um, the idea is that you apply this onto at least two of the driving wheels. Um, so in this case, we're going to be applying the bullfrog snot to the two rear driving wheels on this one and this one. Um, and then you have to leave it for 24 hours to cure. So essentially what this is like is it's like a liquid heat shrink so you apply it to the the wheels of the solution um, when it cures it cures like this very dark green tinge color um, so you're not going to have locomotives running around with this stuff on the wheels so you don't have to worry about that too much but to undertake this what you need to do is you need to give your locomotive power but you also need a cradle which we have um, I leave the tender attached for this because um, you need to draw power to the locomotive somehow. So the locomotive's on. I'll just zoom in so you can see it a bit better. There we go. Um, a couple of crocodile clips are always good because crocodile clips can um, really help. give power to it. If you've got tender drive or tender pickups, this is a really, really easy. It's really, really difficult to do on a Barkman locomotive for obvious reasons. Um, I'm not going to rehash that one over again, but just two pickups on the tenders of the wheels like so, and we're good to go. Uh, straddle the clip so it's not like going to interfere with each other. Easy if you've got big fingers, let me tell you. So we'll just call up COA on the e-cars and make sure it's running properly before we start the application. Uh, A4COA, there it is, beautiful. And I'll just put some light on here as well so you can see this a little bit better. Okay. So there we go, that's just a little bit better. So we got A4COA and there we go. So the, the light motor is drawing power. Reverse direction. Fantastic. Okay, so the best way to apply this stuff is actually with um, a toothpick or a matchstick. So I've just got a couple of matchsticks here. Toothpicks work just as well. And we're going to set the locomotive in reverse direction just because it's a little bit easier to negotiate the application of the bullfrog snot that way. So I'm going to crank it up to about 10 to 15. So I think 20 is a good number. So I've got it set to 20, 20 speed steps. That's probably about as fast as you want it to be on the initial application. Um, so we'll just open up the bullfrog snot. Now, all you really want to start with is about that much. And if it's not gonna focus, I've just gotta get it to focus. So you only want about that much on the end of the uh, matchstick or toothpick to start with. And then we're going to apply it to this well to start with. Very, very light pressure. You don't need to force it on, just let it trickle down on its own. Okay. And then get an even spread. As best you can. Try 
and hold the most steady as you possibly can. Um, you want this stuff right up into the flange of the wheel because that's where it's going to work the most effectively. Just a little bit more. Again, not too much. You put too much on, it goes absolutely everywhere. So just try and avoid that as much as possible. Okay, so that wheel's now done. We're just going to crank the speed up just a tiny bit. About 40 to 50 speed steps. And just using your finger, you want to smooth out the application. You don't have to worry about it. And that's exactly how it should look. So you want about 80 to 90% of it to be on the interior of the, of the flange. And then you just got to make sure you didn't get any anywhere you don't want it. So on spots like here where you can see the brakes and everything like that, you can just get a pair of tweezers or again a toothpick and just pull out any of the stuff you don't want before it cures. Okay. So that's the first wheel done. You can see it compared to the one next to it. So that one hasn't been treated that's as factory. That one has got the bullfrog snot onto it. We're gonna do the opposite wheel now. Again, we'll just lower the speed. About 20 speed steps, you don't need any more. Again, the same amount, nothing more. That's about as much as you want on the end of your stick to start with and very lightly apply. Uh, you know, there's no magic way to apply it. It's really just touch and go very, very lightly. You don't want to be swathing heaps of this stuff onto the locomotive because once it's on there, it's very, very difficult to get off until at least it cures. And by then it could be too late. So that's a nice, generous application. Same thing again, finger, crank the speed up to about 40 to 50 up, 50 speed steps. Lightly hold your finger on there so it actually forms. Just make sure you've got all of it off the flange. Again, just use your fingernail. Just a quick touch up. Same process again. And this is the fantastic thing about Bullfrog Snot, it doesn't require any special tools. You just need to sort of eyeball it. And once you've done a couple, it's it's pretty easy to get it right. Um, Okay, there we have it. So the thing about this stuff is it says you have to leave this overnight for at least 24 hours for it to cure properly. So long as you don't get it on the inside wheel where the pickups are on the, on the A4s especially, you've got no problem. And the same on the exterior of the wheel. So you can see we haven't got any on the, on the red wheels. Um, it looks a bit naff. But when this thing cures, it gets pretty hard to see. So you don't have to worry about it being visually impairing on your locomotives. So we're gonna wind this down. Now, because this takes 24 hours to, first, to cure, I can't really show you this particular locomotive on the same haulage test, but what I do have already prepared, channeling my best TV cook, TV show host cook, is Bitten. Now, Bitten, it's very, very hard to see. Bitten already has bullfrogs not on the rear two wheels. You can probably see it looks really grimy and dirty, but that's just actually the bullfrog snot so these two have already been treated um, so we're going to chuck this one on and yes this does have magnets but so does this one and um, the power base works to an extent but um, we're going to show you now bitten 
pulling 10 Mark 1 coaches up the helix without any problem whatsoever. Back in a second. Okay, so the sister engine to Commonwealth of Australia Bitten is already treated with Bullfrog Snot. We're going to set it to 50 speed steps again, only this time it's going to be hauling 10 Mark 1 coaches, and you'll see the difference compared to the other two. Um, so the advantage of doing this is that you can run longer trains without using any sort of assistance. And here she comes. And already it's charging up there without any sort of hesitation or problem. It was about here that the Commonwealth of Australia stalled and that was with eight. So we've got two additional coaches on here now. And barring a bit of dirty track on the Helix, it's actually running relatively smoothly without any, any problems. Electrical conductivity hasn't really been compromised. You do lose two wheels of pickup, but tender engine locomotives are actually really good at that. So And there we have it, an unassisted pull up a 2.5% helix with 10 Mark 1 coaches. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the difference Bullfrog Snot can make to your Class A4 or any steam locomotive made by either manufacturer, for that matter. Um, quite a considerable improvement. And this particular locomotive, it's had this Bullfrog Snot treatment for a couple of weeks now. I've noticed no detriment to overall performance. Provided the track is clean and the tender pickups are all clean, this locomotive will run unimpeded with Bullfrog Snot, no problem whatsoever. And we've got a helicopter going overhead. Okay, it should be gone. Um, 
So look, thank you very much to everybody for uh, subscribing to the channel. We're now at 800 subscribers, so thank you so very, very much to all of you. Um, I really, really appreciate the support. Uh, coming in the next few weeks, uh, we've got some videos on a few different bits and pieces. Um, I can't even remember what they are now. <laughs> um, but one of them is going to be a little closer look at a Hornby B12 I recently picked up. Lovely little locomotive. Um, and then, yeah, we'll take it from there. So until the next one, thank you so much for, uh, for watching once again. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one very, very soon. Catch you later, guys.